Season's greetings, y'all. So, first things first, I gotta give a huge shout out to Loch Ness Monster, who inspired me to do this video. He, um, he has more of a gaming channel, but he's done videos, um, um, I think he's kind of stopped them for now. He'll probably do them more again later, but, um, he's done these videos where he talks about obscure toy lines from different decades, and it's one of the things I really like about his channel. I'll have the link to his channel below in the description. Um, but it's something I always like. One of the things I liked about his channel was these videos, and it was like, you know, I kind of want to do one of those myself, and I thought, maybe this would be a good idea for, um, a Christmas video, or, you know, um, since tomorrow, well, today I'm posting this will be Christmas Eve. Um, so I thought I'd do something similar, but do a little bit of a, put a little bit of a stretch on it, so to speak, or it's, where it's like, these are obscure toy lines of the 90s that a lot of people don't really remember or talk about, but they're ones that I really liked. So, uh, let's get right into it. The first one is... Attack Pack! Which, that was what the commercials used to do. They were like, they had that 90s in-your-face type of thing. Um, this is actually one of the ones I had from when I was a kid. You might you know, think like, oh, it's like a little monster truck with a red windshield, but... Nope, actually, you do this. So it's more of like a bat. Uh, I had another one that was like a, a bug or something. I had quite a few of these when I was a kid, but, uh, yeah, this was one of my favorite. I had another one that, like I said, it was like a bug, and it was like green and orange and stuff. And it wasn't just, um, the monster truck things either. There was also flying ones, like here's a jet one that I have. Malt doesn't work too well anymore. Because <laughs> this thing is like 25 years old. Kind of looks like a pterodactyl or something. Um, you know, and there was other ones too. Like, there was other land vehicles. There were spaceships. There was, like, boats and just stuff. Um, I remember there was also one that was, like, huge. That I, I never actually had that. But although this toy line was kind of obscure, um, they were popular enough to have a McDonald's toy line, so to speak. You know, what price says the year on here? 94. Wow. So, uh... There was this one that was a garbage truck or dump truck, whatever. And there was this one that was kind of like a boat. I always thought this kind of looked like a face on top here, like the eyes and the mouth. Uh, uh, scratch that. Yeah, I don't write the first time. The eyes and the mouth. It's like a submarine jet boat type of thing going on there. And there was this plain one, which... <laughs> that always kind of reminded me of Beetlejuice. Uh, or Barbara from Beetlejuice. <laughs> and there was this space shuttle type one. It's like some kind of 50s sci-fi movie or something. But, uh, yeah. Um, the next one, which I've actually talked about a lot in quite a few of my videos, because <laughs> it's funny. Well, first off, let me just say what they were called. They were Z-Bots. These little... Six inch robot, uh, two inch, excuse me, two inch robot figures. And the funny thing with Z Bots, this was my favorite, next to Ninja Turtles, this was my favorite toy line as a kid back in the 90s, which is funny because, you know, everyone and their mother remembers the classic Ninja Turtle toys, but these were more of an obscure toy line. So, uh, anyway, they always came, um, these were promoted through Micro Machines, although they weren't as successful as Micro Machines. And, um, but they had, they were pretty popular, I mean, well, popular enough that they had the series ran for quite a few years, which I'll get to more on that in a moment. Um, but like I said, they were promoted through Micro Machines, and they had four series series, whatever. Um, they were released in 92, and they ran until about, like, 95, I believe. And, this one's arms a little bit stiff. Uh, but yeah, series one and two, which were kind of like, blended together, so to speak. Um, Kind of hard to explain, but um, those one, series one, they were kind of very basic. Like this one looks like Johnny Five from Short Circuit. Uh, here's another one. Got more here. I, I got a whole box of them here, but I was gonna take every single one of them out. There's another one. Um, and series one and two, they had them kind of like in different categories. They always came free in a pack, which I forget if I mentioned that or not, but. Um, uh, and the good ones were called Z-Bots, the bad ones were called Voids, which you could kind of tell if they had, like, the symbol on their chest there, or anywhere on their body. Like, there's an example of a Z-Bot, and there's... This one's kind of hard to see because it's black on black. That little thing on his chest, that was the symbol for the Voids, 
Which, like, z bots were the good ones, the Voids were the bad ones. Not all of them had the symbols. Or if you were like me and my brother, you could just make up your own rules when you played with them. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, where was I going with this? Oh yeah, Series 1 slash 2, they had them in, like, different categories, basically. Like, there was cop bots, which were the ones with the guns, and there was, like, flymatrons, which were the flying ones. Clash Masters were, like, they had swords and blades and stuff. And there was a few others, but you get the idea. Um... And then Series 2, uh, excuse me, Series 3, which I believe was probably my favorite, um, they, they were much more detailed, like, here's a couple of examples, like, this one, they started making ones that looked, like, more, like, insects and other things, like, here's one that looks like a mosquito, and was, this one I always thought he was kind of cool. There's these guys. And during this time, they also made ones that, like, would, um, that would bite. Like this, for example, just boom, who just went flying. <laughs> uh, I'll get him after. But here's a good example of one. He's got three heads. And there was also ones that would, like, turn it to have, like, a simple little transformation into a car. Like this guy right here. It turns into kind of like a truck almost or something. Yeah, these were uh, thro from. Throughout the early mid '90s, these were always on my uh, Christmas wish list. And here's another one of a tr example of a transforming one. Turns a little to like a little tank guy, which uh, his arms aren't really cooperating at the moment, but you get the idea. Um, during this time, they also made what were called Link Bots, which you know because these always came free in a pack. Like here's one that's you know, it comes with this guy, this guy, and this guy, and then you link them all together. To make like a, ooh, a construction type one. Although I always thought it was more like a scorpion. Like, see the claw. Like these would be the claws and this the stinger. But no, nah, it's more of like a. Well, it could be whatever you want, I guess. Now, series three, they um, uh, or series four, excuse me. I always get that mixed up. They actually um went back into like the categories and stuff. Like there was sword and shield, and there was like um bone and brawn and things like that. Um, but anyways, for these ones, you know, they had ones that would, like, punch or shoot spikes out, for example, like this one. It's just a couple of examples of ones, like, here's one of the sword and shield guys, who's got a guitar for an arm. These were the bone and brawn type of ones, like, they're all, like, muscle head or skeleton type things. There's another one that would squeeze, you can see that. I remember in the commercial, they actually showed that one with a, a clump of dirt, like, crushing it. Um, and throughout their years, they had a wide variety of, like, vehicles as well. Like, there's a car, that type thing, a motorcycle. Um, <laughs> this was, they always had, like, cheesy names, too. Like, this robot type thing was called the Joggernaut. They always had the symbols on them, too, so you can tell which vehicle it was. Like, for example, this is a Void vehicle. Or Mech, whatever. Um, they had, they only had two play sets. Um, so to speak, one of them, well, actually, I'll get to that in the other, in a second, there was this one, which was called the Fang Fighter, because of the fangs on it, basically, it's like a jet stealth bomber type thing, but then it converts into a command center, this thing goes up, actually, yeah, I had this one when I was a kid, as well as Megabot, which was this giant robot thing, and then my brother had the, this was for voids, the, um, my brother had the Z-Bot playset, which I believe was called the Z-Fortress HQ. It was basically like a base with stands, and then like a couple of gun turrets, and a, a watchtower thing, and then it, there were these tops that you would put like a Z-Bot in, like spin it around, like shoot it down a ramp into the opponents and stuff. <laughs> and, uh, again, similar to Attack Pack, these were popular enough to have a toy line, but instead of McDonald's, it was Burger King. So, um, my, uh, my mom, there was a, actually, it's still there, a Burger King down the street from my mom's house. So, naturally, that we would eat at from time to time, and because my brother and I were obsessed with these things, naturally, we tried to collect them all. Um, in doing so, this was the first one from the, uh, from Burger King. And, uh, because we were trying to collect them all, my brother and I each ended up with at least four of this guy. So, we we're like, oh, just use them as, like, a foot soldier. Uh, this was the second one. It was kind of like a bat or something. Third one was this guy, who my brother and I always thought he looked kind of like a ninja. And the fourth one was this guy. 
And the fifth and final one, which we actually didn't get him as a kid, but you know, I bought him online recently throughout the years. It would look like that. Uh, but let's move on to the next thing. Now this one is going to be kind of weird, or actually it's kind of interesting because, well, two reasons. One, I don't have, um, it was like a wide variety of different things. Like, there was different, which I'll get to more of that in a second, but also because I don't have a lot of these things. Now, well, let me get started. There's this guy, and this was a toy line, which I believe came out in 96, was called The Epic Adventures of Tarzan. You're probably thinking, like, what the hell does a four-armed mantis guy have to do with Tarzan? Well, <laughs> um, uh, here was the, this was... Like a different take on Tarzan. I don't think there was like a TV show for it or anything. It was just like this really random toy line where Tarzan went on these different adventures from the jungle to the center of the earth to Mars. And for each one, he had, it was like each adventure where he would fight like different enemies. Like for the center of the earth, he fought like these snake people and these like bat like creature guys. Um, and for Mars, which I think that was my favorite, partially because I'm a big sci fi fan, but also. Because, um, he had, like, these com um, com comrades with him, like, and his outfit was different for each one. Like, the, um, Mars, he had, like, like a furry white cape and then, like, a Thor-like helmet. And then he had this guy with him. I think his name was John, but I'm not sure. He had, like, black and gold armor, and then there was this girl, I forget her name, and then there was this guy, the four-armed mantis guy, who I've had this for... Literally, like, almost 25 years, because I got it for my birthday in ninth grade, which was back in March of 96. Um, but yeah, there was, a, what was cool about this was there was a variety of different versions of them. Like, there was these rubber poseable ones um, with this, like, toy line. There was these rubber poseable ones. There were, like, six-inch figures that you'd push a button and they'd, like, yell or something. Like, you know, obviously Tarzan would do the infamous Tarzan yell. Um... There were, I think there were, like, two-inch figures that would come in, like, a set um, of, like, five or six or something. And there was also, like, a Mighty Max type of thing. Like, one for each. Like, there was the jungle, the center of the earth, and the Mars. I had all three of them, but unfortunately I don't have them anymore. But, yeah, that was a really cool toy line thing there. Because there was so many, like like I said, there was, like, there was the rubber ones. There was the Mighty Max type thing. There was the mini figures. There was the six-inch figures. And like I said, it was just a cool idea. Now, for the last one, this was called, I got my Ziploc bag, which I should probably replace. These were called, ah, screw it, were called Fistful of Aliens, which looked like this. Man, I just dropped them. Ugh. But, anyway, it, there was actually, like, a game that went with this so to speak, which I'll get to more in a second. I kind of just like playing with them, like, as they were, like, these little tiny minifigure type things. And it was the traditional thing, like, triangle thing, you know, green beats blue, blue beats red, and red beats green. Um, but it was, like, the blue guys were basically, like, like, ice type things, and the red ones were, like, muscle bound, and the green ones were, like, bugs and plants and stuff, and the way the game worked was, there was like these three pod things, there was, you know, the three colors, blue, red, and green, and a piece just broke off, that's fucking fabulous. <laughs> anyway, you would take, um, because my brother and I used to play this, um, like, you take a random mishmash of, like, different, of uh, the three different colors, and then, you know, on the opposite side, you know, you'd stand opposed from each other, you'd, um, take one of your guys, Put them in the front, close it up, and then you'd go like this. And la you'd each launch your this onto the table, or whatever you were playing on, desk or whatever. And um, the way it worked was, you know, like I said, it was like red beats green and so on. Um, but if you both had the same color, um, you would look at the number on the sole of their foot. So, like for example, let's say I threw this guy who's a 12, and then my opponent threw this guy who's a 9, so... That means I would beat this guy, and then it's like whoever got... I think you would do up to eight, and then like whoever got the most points would win. It's a its a short game, but it was a lot of fun. And also what made it more fun was that my brother and I 
used to just, instead of just like, it was like, oh, my guy went out, so I'll put mine to the side or whatever. What we used to do was like do like fatalities and stuff, like, or, you know, simple little, you know, use our imagination and stuff. But yeah, those were um, some of the obscure toy lines of the 90s that I loved. Um, um, like I said, thank you, Loch Ness, Loch Ness Monster, for inspiring me to do this video. Make sure you check out his channel. I hope you all have a Merry Christmas, and as always, thanks for watching.